So my camera's broken right now. It's just not, it's being a bitch basically is what I'm saying. Uh, so we're gonna bring this video to you from my phone. Hello, I'm Hayley. Welcome to my channel. You know, all that spiel. Um, this is me recapping the books that I've read for my Norse um, mythology concept. <laughs> I started reading things, didn't document them, read a few things betwe uh, between and after that. So now it's just like, okay, I guess I better just come on here and like, meh it at you and hope that it makes sense and is good. <sighs> For context, I only really know like the smidgenest, the smallest amount of Norse mythology before I started reading these. Um, I did a school performance thing about the death of Balder and I was Balder and that's like it besides, you know, Marvel and that influence that it has over pop culture. Uh, literally next to nothing. I don't know, fu I know fuck all about Vikings, like barely anything. I'm pretty sure I did like one history class on it and then like in one ear and out the other because it just wasn't the topic that I wanted to learn at the time. And now I hate myself for never paying attention. Um, I'm in a really mood, weird mood right now. So get used to it because it ain't going anywhere anytime soon. Um, anyway. Um, anywhere I'll, I usually want to start uh, getting into mythology and that is with a mid-grade book. Um, this is another Rick Riordan. Surprise, surprise. When I want to get into something, I start with Rick Riordan. <laughs> Uh, this is Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard. Asgard? I don't know why I said it like that. Um, and this is the first book, which is The Summer, The Sword of Summer. Uh, I knew nothing when I came into this, like nothing at all. I knew that I liked Rick, Ro Rick Riordan's style. Um, it may not be for my age group, but I think it fits good. Like I... When I pick this up, I'm like, this is for children, Haley. You're not supposed to think of it with like a super judgmental gaze. You get what I'm saying? And I pick this up and like every other series, I've really enjoyed it and I will continue with the series. I feel like I should at this point just say Rick Riordan's one of my favorite authors, but I don't know. I haven't reread any of it. I have not reread any of his stuff. So it's always a good one-time read. I don't know if I would like his books after I've reread them. You know? Also, not my age group, so I really shouldn't be saying whether or not they're good or bad. You know? Like, I don't fuck with giving them star ratings because they're not for me. Anyway. This story uh, is about Magnus Chase. He's the bloke on the cover. I remember my friend always joking about him looking like Kurt Cobain and I can never unsee it. Um, even though he's supposed to be a child. Um, this picture of him, he looks way older than a child age, but it's fine. Uh, this is about a bloke named Magnus Chase. Um, if you didn't click together the last name Chase, like I didn't. Um, he's Ag Anna Annabeth Chase from the Percy Jackson series. It's her cousin. I didn't realize the same last names. I'm an idiot. Fine, fine, well and good. Um, basically, he's homeless. He's just chilling. He's got some friends who are also homeless, and they are looking after him one at day one at night you know they're always around just looking after him because he's a child his mother passed away and he's never met his father and his mother was an adventurer she used to take him out and just around places so magnus feels really out of place in the city where he's living at the moment he doesn't feel like he really belongs anywhere and with that said, him being homeless, he has to sort of do the best that he can to survive. And that's the how it begins. It starts with him finding out that people are looking for him. It is about to become his birthday. We know birthdays are important in Rick Riordan's universe. Um, and you find out that the people who are looking for him is Annabeth and her father. And with that... It gets interesting. Uh, Annabeth is not in this book a lot. She's in it in the beginning and a little bit 
towards the end, not in anything like action packed. You know, this is Magnus Chase's story, not Annabeth's. She's there to sort of help push the plot along in the beginning, and that's about it. Um, we find out that there is this sort of summer that has been prophesized for Magnus to find. And but from based on the cover, you can kind of tell what happens with that because he does find it. <laughs> I just told you, but you know, <laughs> you can tell what happens based on the cover. Um, and this book has, like most Rickardian books, it has like that sprinkle of the original mythology stories in it. So in this, there's like scenes where he has to go find the world serpent, and it's the same concept that happens in the old Norse stories. There's um, Fren Frenru? Frenru? The giant wolf that is currently chained up. He's supposed to be the sort of beginning of Ragnarok because these series is about holding back Ragnarok. That's like the whole old, the whole like concept of Old Norse is like the anticipation for this huge world ending moment, which is Ragnarok. And this book is about Frenrir, and he's all like, you know, chained up. And Magnus is like, I don't think that's safe. I think he's going to break free soon. I can like sense it with my tingles. And he, they go on a quest and end up trying to prevent that from happening, prevent him from escaping. So with the quest, they go different missions. It's just very interesting to like sort of dip your toes in and start fresh when it comes to the old Norse world because you really know nothing. Like you learn about Yggdrasil, you learn about the different realms, you even get to visit some of the different realms, you um, get to hang around with some dark elves, you get to hang out with some dwarves, like you really get to experience the world through a child's eyes for the first time and I think that's the best way to sort of start looking into Norse mythology. Now with that said, I loved this. Uh, not for my age group, but I still enjoyed it a lot. And this kind of really made me want to like desperately find out more about the specifics, about where this origin originated from, where what it was inspired by. So I picked up this one. This is the Norse Myths and Legends, Tales, Heroes and Tales of Heroes, Gods and Monsters. This one is one of the other books that I got bought recently. We have the like four book collection that I've uh, recently accumulated. And this one is the Norse mythology stories. This took me a long time to get through just because physically reading is taxing for my mental health, like for my brain sometimes. And I don't want to force myself to read when I don't want to read. I usually read like one little short story on my break at work and that kind of got me in the process of reading physically, getting through it slowly bit by bit, a bit more digestible for me at the time. Um, this one it literally just goes through the stories of Old Norse in a way that is quick, precise and you're able to sort of get the full experience. Um, I still feel like I could have had a little bit more to it, like I kind of want to do more, more research and get super into it, um, but I'm not really in that mood anymore, you know, I go through phases where I like want to read the same things for like a week and then I like, I never want to look at it again for like another few months, so <laughs> this book I do recommend just for the beginners, for the basics, to really sort of develop upon what I learnt from here. This was just like, oh, so that's where that originated from. That's how that have came about. That's where that, like, you know, inspired that. And it was so cool to see, like, a clear-cut sort of map of the way... Uh, events happen and the way things change, how these deities affect each other and how they all kind of function together. We learn about Loki being kind of more or less like the brother of Odin, not the son that has been sort of shown in the Marvel universe. 
you get to learn more about Belda and that incident between Belda's death um, caused by Loki. You get to see a little bit more about like the world serpent, a little bit more about the different realms and what dark elves do and what dwarves do. Super, super interesting to me. Um, I just like, I do want to know more. Um, I think I'm going to, you know, take a break from here and then go to Vikings and like maybe a little bit more about that. Um, during this process, I got super interested into Nordic runes, so I bought myself like a little like kit so I can tell my own rune tellings. Um, because I went to a like crystal health well being like you know <laughs> spiritual a convention thing, and I picked up some stuff. I love my tarot, so I thought I would try it out with some runes, and it just, like, fit the moment, you know? Um, I haven't used them yet. I really want to get, like, really want to learn more about it so that I can fully, like, appreciate it for what it is, and not me, like, just fucking around and trying to hope it makes sense. You know what I mean? I want to know all of the things I can know <laughs> to do it justice. Um... That was me going on off track completely, I'm sorry. Uh, I, today, am planning on finishing the uh, Norse part of this Myths and Legends. We all know this book by now. I've been pottering along through it, getting places and also getting nowhere. Um, it's just really quick, concise, like, I'm literally just going to find the basics. Um, I just got lipstick on this book. Fun. <laughs> Um, I think it's just going to develop a little bit more upon what this has to say and just sort of give my brain a bit of a refresher about um, the Nordic things. You know, I think reading different, even if it's the same thing over and over again, you kind of, it kind of like sticks in your brain a bit more, a bit better. Um, another thing that I also wanted, wanted to read, um, I started reading and I don't know if I'm going to finish it. Was, is Loki uh, Where Mischief Lives. This one is from Mackenzie Lee, and this is before the first Thor movie set um, in the Marvel Universe. And this is supposed to be Loki being like a young trickster, and he does some naughty shit and gets goes to Earth, and then tries to solve a murder as like a, a punishment. <laughs> um... And it's apparently set in the 19th century London. Uh, and I just think that, like, that's super exciting and cool. But then I started reading it and it's got a, like, female character in there that is giving me a little bit of romance vibes. And I'm like, I don't want to see this. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> so I'm going to keep reading it and hopefully it gets a little bit more interesting, less more romance based and more like solving the murder based. I would greatly appreciate that because that's one of my criticisms about the recent Thor Loki movie. Not, I want to say Thor movie. The recent Loki TV show. I don't really care about the romance stuff. Like, it just didn't feel right for me. It wasn't my thing. It wasn't for me. I have to leave it, toss it down to that, which is really sad because Loki is my favorite character. One of them. Um... But yeah, so we're going to keep trying to read this, and I'm not going to hesitate to DNF if it's just not my vibe, so I'll let you know what happens after I finish this. I am going to read the more myths and legends first, and then I'll continue this today. But that's what I've got to tell you so far. Um, I'm super hyper right now, and I don't know why. Like, what did I do? Did I... I was literally, like, exhausted before, and now I'm, like... Go, 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 go. Uh, we'll see if I can take the time to read. Um, I might be a little too hyper to be able to focus on reading, so I might have to go for a walk first. Anyway. Cool. I got cold, so I put my heater on. I should turn that off so it's not annoying. Um, so I read the little Nordic section. Um, didn't learn anything new, but... I did continue on reading towards more of the, um, like, Finnish story, stories, stories, and 
there's things in here from Finland that I have no clue about. So I'm learning a bit more here. There's a few um, like stories about the Kelvilla. Kelvilla? Kelvilla? Um, and there's like the tradition, it's an, an epic poem based in the traditional oral poetry of Eastern Finland and it's the national epic of the country. So it tells like a little bit of an overview about it and then whatnot. But I personally want to um, like actually listen to it and like read it for myself. So I think I'm gonna try and see if I can find it either on YouTube or in an audiobook format because I want to know more about that from the source, not just from the textbook. But that was a fun little extra bit of information that I didn't expect to get. Um, this one here doesn't go into a whole lot about um, the like old Norse stories. Uh, that's literally like only a few pages, but that's because there's a lot more to go into um, when it comes to like Celtic beliefs and whatnot. So they've kind of like super condensed the Northern Europe because they don't want to like go into like they want to be able to develop a bit more from other areas. You know? You know, you know? Cool. We're only like 36 pages in of this and I'm not vibing with it so far but that's because it's still in Asgard it's not in um earth I want to say America but that's not where they're going to they're going to England <laughs> London England I don't know why that accent came out of me <laughs> but yeah uh the font's pretty big so I should be able to read it quick la but Sting gave his words a hard edge. You know what I miss? When I was like, what the fuck is that? But it's just a pile of clothes. <laughs> what I was saying was, you know what I miss in the Thor movies? I miss when they spoke in like this like weirdly, like very proper Shakespearean language because now they don't do it as much. And also like, I get what they tried to do. I didn't hate Rag like um yeah I didn't hate Ragnarok in the movies but I like I miss the darker more edgy stuff like I gravitated towards Thor because of the dark uh more serious tone and then like I'm one of those people who actually liked the dark world I mean it definitely could have been better like there was definite large spaces for improvement it was a little too dark in that you couldn't tell what was going on but I personally like I vibe with it you know I like second half of the movie kind of didn't vibe with me that much but like I definitely liked it more than like the newer Thor movie for example when they said that Thor was going to go with Guardians of the Galaxy I was like I don't because I don't really like Guardians of the Galaxy a whole lot. I know, another controversial topic. Um, so I just kind of, I don't know. I like miss, I miss old Thor. I miss old Loki, like Avengers, first Avengers movie era Loki. Like that's the Loki I want. Um, anyway, I'm stalling so I can avoid reading this. I'm up to chapter three and I'm still not liking it. So I reckon... I'm gonna give it like a few chapters. Like I'm not just gonna like stop. Uh, how about if I read, I'll read up to part two, which is here. I'll read all of this. And if I don't like it, I'm not continuing it. Sounds good. Okay. I the way I'm reading this is like quick skimming, picking out words, and then like flipping a page in hopes that it will get interesting because I do not care about this part right now. So we've got an Aurora is the, her name and she's a like sorceress. Um, at least that's what he calls her. And then it's like flirty banter between, between the two of them. And I'm like, I just don't care. So she's manipulated him to go into the vault um, dressed up as like 
playing the role of Odin using an enchantment um, that she apparently taught him. So she, they've made it that she's his teacher in magic, not uh, Frigga, which just is a bit interesting. It's an interesting choice. Um, and then, like, this dude comes out and they, like, stab him in the neck and then Odin finds out and is like, what's going on here? Why would you do, like, why would you mess with this stuff? <sighs> and we're like, am I dangerous? Frigga's fingers stilled upon the small bag of herbs. She was panicking. Why do you ask me that? Loki well, looked out over Asgard, the smoky dusk. Okay, this is... I like having interactions between her mum. I mean, his mum and him, so... I don't care. Patience, my son. Odin was assembling the court for Amora's trial. Okay, so she's on trial now. Cool. Okay. What are they going to do with her? And theft and robbery, not the same. Don't tell me they're going to be have to do the f hunting together. Okay, so he doesn't speak up. And then Amora had been led away in chains, banished to Midgard. Okay, so she is going to be in, at Midgard and he's going to go on a mission to go find her. You know what? You bury your dead in, the own, in your own city. No room left. They started stacking bodies in the street after cholera outbreak. Yikes. I don't care. I tried. I've reread it. I've, you know, vibing and I just don't vibe with it like at all. Even like the little snippets that I've read where he's actually in London, I'm like, no. It just wasn't what I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be a little bit more gritty, a little bit more like I pictured this um like I wanted like Jack the Ripper vibes where like, you know, he's trying to solve a murder and it's all dark and grimy and meh, but like, I I shouldn't have expected it to not be like that. You know, I have high expectations and I knew it wasn't going to be like that. So, um, and this female character is like a big point in this, at least, um, in the beginning. Like I did read all of this, um... So, you know, I read, so those of you who are going to say like, oh, you just skim read it. I read from he all of this without skim reading and it wasn't vibing for me. So I, even if I read this normally without skim reading, I don't think it would vibe for me either. So I am just going to DNF that. I'm sorry. I've got other books that I want to read. You know, I just finished Pan's Labyrinth. I just finished, um, like, the short stories of growing up queer in Australia. I just started The Scarlet Letter. Like, I have so many other books that I want to read. And this is such a big book that I'm, like, really not vibing with. So I'm just going to gift it, move on, and that's going to be great. Um, for those of you who are curious, <laughs> I'm not going to be talking about any other books. <laughs> I just, I, you know, I read what I was going to read and I'm sorry that I'm coming to you in like a, you know, quick, um, vlog style, not even vlog style, just a quick recap of what I've read instead of a vlog. Um, I was just not feeling up for filming myself and my camera 
is all of a sudden started to crap itself. Um, my battery is not charging, so I'm gonna have to go invest in a new battery then. Fun fun. Alright, um, sorry this video is crap and probably super quick and like meh, but... I don't really care, is that part of me? I don't really care that much. Bye.